sauce at that fuego. Yeah, stay with that sauce like Alfredo. Yeah, blessings they come when he say so. Hold up, hot to my haters, I'm Mano. Yeah, I put my homies on payroll. Yeah, placed at the top like a Kanko. Hey, how y'all doing? This is Rick Sincere with MTNV Sports. Geek to be joined today by the entire crew. Uh, we got my boy, The Voice, right here. What's up, Voice? How you doing? What's good, everybody? It's your man, The Voice, Fights Correspondent for MTNV Sports. Conrad, what's poppin', sir? How you doing? What's up? This is your boy, Connie Westside, the best side. You know how we do. Campus Connect crew, you know, come soon. I'll at you. Mr. Marv, what's going on, sir? How you doing? How y'all doing? This is Mr. Mac Talk himself, joining the MTU TV. So how y'all doing? We doing well, man. Yo, um, so we're about to hop into a few different topics today. First off, we'll start off by talking about the man who just can't seem to get it right. We'll hop into what's going on with Josh Gordon after another, another short amount of time in um in a place where he could have been very successful. Uh, we'll talk about him and what's going on with Josh Gordon. After that, we'll talk about the Heisman, but we won't talk about the man who won the Heisman. We'll talk about everybody else who was seated um, next to him, right, in their nice-looking suits, listening to the best speech that I've ever heard from a Heisman Trophy winner. Um, then we'll talk. We'll get into a little bit of the MMA. Don't don't roll your eyes when when you do when you when I say stuff like that. I will right, we'll talk about a little bit of MMA, and then we'll hop into what's going on with the Miami Heat. What is happening down there in Miami it seems to be a lot going on with the Miami Heat. We're going to get a little bit of insight today um, from the crew. All right, fellas, how y'all doing, man? We're going to first start off by talking about what's going on with Josh Gordon. As you know, he has been indefinitely suspended because of yet another run-in with um, performance-enhancing <clears throat> drugs. The Seattle Seahawks wide receiver Josh Gordon has been suspended indefinitely for violating the NFL policy on performance-enhancing substances and substances of abuse. Man, y'all, talk to me. What is going on with Josh Gordon? Why can't he get this right? I feel like, man, he just he, need, he needs help. Seriously, Spreak. Um. And they need to give him all the help he can get. I feel like the NFL should just really cut ties with him and get him the help that he needs because he just seemed to get, can't seem to get it together like five times. Like, really? Five? And you keep bringing him back? Like, what's going on? But, but Kaepernick can't get a job? Mm -hmm. I, I just, just don't get it. In my opinion, I don't get it. But I feel like just be done with him, like, period, man, because – you bring him back, you just gonna keep him messing up, and messing up, and messing up, and no matter what team you put him on, that's just me. The voice is this a rap for for Josh Gordon? I think the fact that the suspension is indefinite proves that this is a rap for him. They've given him time after time and chance after chance. I mean, what what number team is this for him? You know, and, and he's been on some phenomenal teams in some phenomenal positions, but he he admittedly just can't seem to, to get it right when it comes to uh, <laughs> the, the drug abuse <laughs> things. And, and Marv, I think the league has done a lot to try to help him by giving him all these chances. But uh, at some point, grace runs out. And it seems as if, especially with this indefinite suspension, that grace is gone. Conrad, you mean to tell me there's not one single team in the NFL that would give this dude one more chance if he if he vows to get it right? I don't think so. And um, honestly, let's let's just be serious. I want to I want to touch on what what Marv said. He really needs help. Um, look, sometimes the limelight is not for people, and um, and it, with his problem, you know, he he was able to air it out and let people know, like I have an issue. You know, there was one time that he uh, went out after training. He went out to look for some, um, look for, just look for some drugs and look for something to um, to get to satisfy his high and satisfy his appetite with that. And um, you know, I it hurts me, man, because it because it, it, it breaks my heart. It really does because you know we you got a person that's obviously needing help, and honestly, someone needs to go alongside that brother and uh, start talking started pouring into his life because he really, really, really needs to uh, get that help that he needs. But as far as another NFL team, Rick, I don't think there's no, I don't think there's anybody that can can help him, man. Because think about the markets. 
the next the next best market would be what Houston, and Houston is where he's from, and and that just, I'll just be the, like the worst place for him. So no, I don't think there's anything else. Well, you came right in as we're talking about Josh Gordon, man. We're trying to figure out um is there another team that will help him? You're talking about what a six three wide receiver um who can really run. If you saw him play just Sunday. Just Sunday, he had a phenomenal catch from Russell Wilson this Sunday. He is an ultra-talented individual. That's the reason he keeps getting jobs. And one of the reasons why we're not seeing as many opportunities for a guy like Kaepernick, some people don't think he's up to, you know, that level. Like, some people don't think he's up to that level and worth the risk. But Josh Gordon mm-hmm. keeps getting people to to bet it all on him, right? Or risk a little bit on him. It won't cost him that much. Will, can you see any any possible landing spot for Josh Gordon? If he can get it right? I can't uh, so, hear you. Yeah. yeah, you can't say it, Mar. But you know what, uh, Reek, voice, my man Conrad, he was with the team that could have helped him. The Patriots could have helped him. And you blew that. What but you're in a big though? market city, bro. Come on now. I hear you, you know, bro. But you the know they're pushing man. over there. I know they are, but, man, you, you had Tom Brady. Coach Belichick, they would have had you. Robert Kraft would have had you for real if he would have went to him. He also had no competition. So there was also no real competition for him. If you look at that situation with New England, you got the one of the best quarterbacks ever to play the game, right? Exactly. You're in a system that's built for you because there is nobody else. There's nobody else who can take his position right now. Nikhil Harry wasn't there to compete with him, right? Yeah. They didn't have Muhammad Sanu at the time, right? You you had that position outright. You're the one go-to guy because Gronk is gone. There's nothing else that you need, and he blew that opportunity somehow. Somehow, some way, he blew that, right? Cool. Now you go over to Seattle. There's no big receiver there for you to have to compete with, right? I know you have DK Metcalf. He's on one side, but on the other side, it's you, Tyler right. Lockett can hold down the slot. You have a perfect a wide receiver combination. There's nothing else to compete with, man. I feel I feel like there are some places that would possibly give him a shot if he came back. I'm thinking about possibly a place like either the Bengals or New Orleans, uh, somebody who is wide receiver needy at the same time, well, bro. The, the, the New Orleans would definitely be a good fit for him. In but I think, opinion, yeah. I think he'll blow so that, like, too. I think he'll blow he'll, that, he'll too. Blow well, he, like here's just just in closing, the issue right now as far as a chance is that he has an indefinite suspension from the NFL. And he's had we know about his issues of uh, drugs of abuse, but you're adding to that along with the drugs of abuse, performance mm-hmm. enhancing drugs. That's why the suspension is indefinite. I don't think he'll have the opportunity because I don't think they'll lift that suspension. Wow. Right. I don't think right, so right. All right, guys. So um, we're going to talk. We're going to hop over to college football now and talk a little bit about what happened last Saturday with the Heisman Trophy. The Heisman Trophy went to LSU quarterback Joe Burrow, who came in after a phenomenal season uh, with the LSU Tigers. He had one and he, he wrapped it up. He wrapped it up when um, he was playing against the Georgia Bulldogs in the SEC championship game and had one of the most epic Heisman moments of all time. So Joe Burrow, <laughs> it may be a hyperbole. So Joe, Joe Burrow won the Heisman. However, for some people who are here, y'all don't quite believe that he should have been the guy. Well, okay, cool. My question is this. If not Joe Burrow, then who should have won it? We'll start off with you, Conrad. Who should have won it if Joe Burrow shouldn't have been the one? That bad man in Oklahoma. That bad man in Oklahoma. Jalen Hurts. Keep in mind, Jalen Hurts had the best story. Had the most to endure. Not only that, he's been there. He's put up numbers. Yes, he had games where he he messed up and he but he had to get them out. He got them out of the um the position they were in and they won games, man. And not only that. He not only that, like he has, he has that mm, actor, man. He has plenty of Heisman moments, plenty of them. He almost got beat by UCF. If it wasn't for that coordinator, we would not know anything about Joe Burrow at all. Just saying, just saying. 
Hey, but Big Mark, said- what you think about it, bro? I don't want to hear about. It. I don't want to hear from uh, LSU guy. Let me let me holler at you, Big Mark. What you think? To be honest with you, bro, Jalen definitely should have won it. I'm not saying because of his story. His story is amazing. I'm not gonna ever knock you for that. But the numbers he's putting up, the incredible wins that he got for that team, especially getting them out of a situation because of the defense messing up. Mm-hmm. And just like I said, phenomenal. And, and like you pointed out last week, this revenge tour he's on, it's just incredible, man. And uh, but he's still gonna he's still gonna lose to old state though, just so you know. <laughs> just just so you know. But I feel like Jalen Hurts definitely <laughs> I feel like Jalen Hurts definitely should have definitely won it. All right. Can I hit you up with the facts right quick? Oh, so so wait a minute. So you got facts now. We, we yeah. not, Fact we not, checker. Can I hit you up with the facts right quick? Yo, Jalen Hurts threw for 3,634 yards and 32 <laughs> touchdowns. That's awesome. I love it. But guess who threw for uh, 1,000 yards more than that? Joe Burrow. 4,715 yards. He threw for 32 touchdowns. Joe Burrow threw for 48. Nearly 50 touchdowns. That's that's 10. That's more than 10 more touchdowns than him. Y'all feel the fan of 16 more touchdowns than he threw. What are you saying? Like, are, are we are we not comparing apples for apples here? Are we not doing that no more? We're just going story for story? Well, we're going and and look, he transferred too. He's a transfer as well. So, I mean, he matches him in story. He matches – he beyond kills him in yardage. He beyond kills him in touchdowns and big, impactful games. Plus, he ain't lose the game. The year Tim Tebow won the Heisman. Listen, the year Tim Tebow won the Heisman, he didn't have any of the numbers that those guys had. Any of those yes, numbers. Yes, he did. He had a lot of but, rushing touchdowns. Oh, no, no. He had, listen. He had listen, record-breaking bro, rushing listen. touchdowns that, that year. Rushing touchdowns. But the thing is, all those, guys that were on, all those guys that were on there – all the guys that were on there, they were quarterbacks. They were solid quarterbacks. They were quarterbacks that wound up being in the lead longer than this guy. I'm talking about longer. I mean, look, I got yeah, he to have all those little moments and all that, blah, 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 whatever. But but, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm clipping y'all. Forgive me. But at the end of the day, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, I really feel as though – those numbers don't matter. It's what? moments. And the Tim Tebow had too matter. many moments that year. He had too many oh. moments that year, bro. Okay, so what moment? The moment he lost? So mo- moments when losing games? Because oh, Joe bro. Burrow didn't lose no games. Joe Burrow didn't lose no games. And you mean moments? We're talking about him. Look, there was, a, I think, seven or eight game losing streak to Alabama. Baylor. They beat Baylor. Alabama. He went down, he Is that not a moment? That time. Wait, Bro, him beating Alabama you know who would have a you know who'd had a moment right after that? Tua. Tua would have had a moment right after that. Why? Because Tua, as soon as they were losing, hey, Tua look, went man. out there and threw a freaking a freaking touchdown in the first hey, play. Look. Come hey, on, look. bro. Hey, get look. out. Bro. Hey, get out bro. I hate I hate it for Tua. I really do. And I love Tua. But this is Joe Burrow's year, bro. It's hands down. Look, when you compare the numbers, there's no comparison. There's none. And I know you don't want to hear the facts. Because that'll bother you in your soul. But it's real. <laughs> hey, Big Mar. Big Mar. Yes. Hey, go yes, put sir. the tea on the hey, go put the tea on the kettle, man. I want to sip some, bro. I got you, dope. I don't want to hear this. Whatever. Call a friend. Anyway, so. <laughs> 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 All right. You Yo, need to call a friend. It, oh. So, voice, there was um there was a big matchup this weekend, right? A lot of people were looking at it. A lot of people were interested. Really, they were interested because somebody was talking big. Big spicy talk, right? We're talking about Kobe Covington coming out with the MAGA shirt, right? Getting everybody riled up. They couldn't wait to see this dude take a L. And um, I don't want to spoil it. What happened? Well, there's no spoiling. <laughs> As you stated, they've been waiting for him to take an L, and he took the L. Now, to his credit, his jaw was broken in the third round. He came out and arguably won the fourth round, yet succumbed to, uh, succumbed to the blows in the last round. And uh, honestly, I think it's a bit of poetic justice that his jaw got broken because he was talking so much. I mean, this man said that Usman's former manager, who just died <clears throat> maybe not even a, a full year ago, was going to be watching this fight from hell. This man said that 
Usman's father talked about his father being uh, a criminal because he was locked up. However, he was locked up when he, he told the story, Usman did, on a Joe Rogan experience, how they let everybody go as far as this was concerned. It was a business deal that uh, went bad. They were not doing the things they needed to. It was an uh, ambulance business. Weren't quite doing the things they needed to. The case had been thrown out. It was the people working for him that were doing the wrong. Not him. He was an owner. They let the people working for him that were doing the wrong go and put him in jail for, what, I think about 12 years. That was back in 2009. He's still in prison now. Still in prison now. And then said that, uh, he, he said that the reason that Usman and his brothers got into school was because of the money that was stolen through what his father had done. When every single one of Usman's uh, family members that went to school that he was talking about got there on scholarships, on athletic mm. scholarships, on the, the wow. backs, on their own backs and the work that they put in. So saying yeah. all these things, just being outright inflammatory and really playing the alt-right poster boy. You know, he, he was a tiki torch carrier. Um, yeah, pe people were looking for the fall and uh, it came in, in grand fashion. Does he really feel like that, or is he? Is this shock value? Was this? Did this feel like more like shock value? Uh, authentic, right? Is he, or was he trying to be the new Conor McGregor, just trying to get under your skin, knowing that it's going to bring more eyes to the fight? Yeah, not not well, as much the new Conor McGregor well, as the new Chael Sonnen. Um, you know, I want to talk this big talk, get you riled up, and then have you want to see my fight. You have to see my fight because of all the buttons that I pushed. But he pushed buttons so far that in his own camp, an American top team, they don't want anything to do with him. You got two fighters in that camp that have told him it's on sight when I see you. You a green light. Wow. On sight, bro? On sight. That's how it is. And, had, and one of them hey. was his former uh, roommate and best friend. Jorge Masvidal, who's on top of the game right now as far yeah. as fights are concerned. Yo, bro, I got a question. Um, cause you cause you mentioned in the video, which hey, make sure you check out reaction time with the voice, man. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to this video and like like and subscribe to the next one. But anyway, um, bro, when you were talking about like uh you're talking about like uh he created this persona about him with uh the whole entire MAGA thing, going on the Candace Owen show, going on the Cam uh, Candace Owen show. And um and 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 telling people that he created it just to get people in the seats, man. I want to get your I want to get your thoughts on that right there. Uh, like, how, how do you feel about him creating that persona? And and then on top of that, talking the mess that he's talking to to fighters like this. I'm not mad about the persona because MMA is so akin to professional wrestling. You really have to have that persona. You have to have some kind of gimmick or shtick, uh, unfortunately, to really make it and make it big. You look at uh, fighters such as Demetrius Johnson, who arguably is the greatest of all time, got no respect, absolutely no respect, had won the championship like 11 times in a row, but nobody wants to see him fight. Because mm. they don't like his personality. So in order to stand out, you have to do something to stand out. So creating that, I don't have a problem with. I have a problem with the lines that he crossed in doing so. He could have still come up with something and not been so, just so utterly offensive. That's where the issue is. He became so utterly offensive. And he said himself that he was getting tired of it, that it was an act. He was kind of getting sick of it himself. But then doubled down after losing, talking all kind of crazy stuff uh, about the, uh, the, the referee who called the fight. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. it's sad. It's sad. And mm -hmm. what's even more sad, which I do uh, touch on in, the, in reaction time, is that he took it like a punk. 
He did wow. not take it like a man. As soon as the fight was wow. over, he he's running out crying, <laughs> knocking over uh, little little ladies, trying to take pictures. They trying to capture them over. He's knocking them over. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. No, it's too much. It's too much. You should shut up. Should have shut up. You should. Hey, you shouldn't have been talking mess. You shouldn't have been talking. Okay. As the good book says, uh, you will reap. What you sow, and he is reaping uh, a, a harvest. Reaping the beaten. Uh, <laughs> yeah, reap, reap the beaten. <laughs> Definitely, because because Usman he said I did this for the world. You've been talking bad about other countries. You've been talking about bad about different people groups. I'm doing this for the world, and for the world, he shut him up. And we are grateful. Um. <laughs> so <laughs> we got to talk about this man. So there's um, hey, there's something actually happening down in Miami, and I know you know for those people who are living in Florida, not used to this kind of stuff. But right now, there is a team being successful um in Florida, and that's the Miami Heat. <laughs> and the Miami Heat are doing something this year that honestly we haven't seen them do in a while. I've heard multiple people say. They have not been this excited about the Heat. Marv said it earlier. Stephen A. Smith said it on his show. They have not been this excited about the Miami Heat since LeBron left, right? They are <laughs> – the voice in his eye rolls. There are um, Classic. a lot going on with the Miami Heat right now. But to be honest, which some people don't even know because they're so much off – they're so off the radar this year because they don't have the stars that everybody else has. A lot of these big um, time teams right now have at least two stars. They really don't. They just have Jimmy Butler. Somebody, please tell me what is happening in Miami and, and why are they being so successful. I don't know, man. I feel like these young boys like Kendrick Nunn, Tyler Hero, and I feel like you know they're gonna get rid of that weight. Deion Waiters, man, he is definitely trouble. He is definitely dead weight on that team. So when they get rid of him and drop him, I feel like they can make a good trade for like Chris Paul or somebody. And they're going to get that other solid star. Oh, here come the voice. I know. I know. <laughs> but uh, Jimmy Butler doing his thing. they number four in the East. Being successful, man. And like you said, Rick, no other star help. Jimmy Butler really doing it by himself. But I feel like they're going to get another good piece when they trade for somebody. And like I said, I cannot wait for them to get rid of Deion Waiters. And for other players like, like Dragic to come back from injuries. It's going to be nice. Like I said, I feel like they can make some noise in the playoff. And they're definitely my sleeper in the East. So, man, um, well, I, I'm sorry. I got a quick question. Go ahead. You said getting Chris Paul. Now you said the only person they got, the only somebody they got, mm -hmm. is Jimmy Butler. And we know. I mean, the the book is out. It's been written on yeah. Butler that it's got to be his way, or it's going uh -huh. to be uh, uh, just hell and fire and brimstone to pay for the other players on the team. Why would Chris Paul come to a situation like that? I don't know. It's been rumors that they said they're going to get Chris Paul. I don't know if he's actually going to go there. I just heard the rumors that they could trade for him. And I understand what you're saying, voice, because Chris Paul, it has his own personality yeah. issue to deal with, right? Yeah, he does. And he's Definitely always does. been he's always been one of those guys where um you know he he either got along with, with the squad or he didn't get along with everybody on the team. And when he didn't get along, right, he would force his will a little bit. So now if you have a Jimmy Butler who likes to have his way, a Chris Paul who likes to have his way, I can see a potential clash there if they get together. However, um, I also see another little bit of an issue, right, because they do have Dragic. I don't know if they, you know, go out and get a Chris Paul, even though it would be a clear upgrade, right, um, at least in some people's mind, to go out and get a Chris Paul. But you have Tyler Hero, you have Kendrick Nunn, like you said. You seem to have a bit of a good squad. Why? I, I don't know. You know, would you mess up chemistry a little bit going out and getting Chris Paul? I hope that. See, we I think that's the thing about. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. No, you good. You good. I have my turn. Yeah. Well, I think that's the thing about basketball, man. We we so we are so fixated on the stars that we have now that we we don't want to develop and make new ones. Um, like. Like uh, um, like we're trying to go out there and get a, a no name. I mean, not not no name, but a, a big name and bring it to a market or whatever. I mean, you got a big name. You got Jimmy Butler, and then now they now they're creating they're creating uh chemistry there. 
So you don't want to ruin that chemistry. You want to see what you can do with that. Um, like I like I like what Tyler I like what Tyler Hero's doing, and I like what, what, what Kendrick Nunn is doing. And, and I mean they're they're valuable pieces to the team, and you know they're 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 making it they're making it a little exciting because like right now they're nineteen eight in uh they're fourth in the East, and you know you're you're in, you're in a good position as far as being in the East, and you know you're being talked about. I mean let's see how the, let's see how the season goes along with the guys that you have. Now uh, I don't know when the trade deadline is. When trade late deadline is that after um that's after February, at the All Star break, at the All Star break. So in February, so mm -hmm. let's see what we got now. Let's see what we got now. Let's see what happens after Christmas Day, and um, yeah, like I said, let's see what we got now, man. I don't want I don't want to mess up what they have because I'm 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 enjoying what I'm enjoying what I'm seeing right now on the on the court. The NBA trade de deadline isn't until February 6th, so they have a lot of time um, to discuss this and, and to figure out, you know, which route they want to take uh, with, you know, with the teams that they now have. I, I feel like if people are talking about them like this, if they're on people's minds to this degree, I feel like this could be something different. You know what I mean? I feel yeah. like this could be something different. Now, what I haven't seen in a while is a team without multiple stars. Right. Well, I'm sorry. My bad. I have seen it. I just saw it in Toronto. They had one major star and they just won the championship. Right. And they created mm -hmm. stars. They created stars. So actually, this could work. I, I take it back. This could work. And we can see what happens with uh, with the Miami Heat this season. All right, guys. So um, we're going to wrap up a little bit. I do want to hear from Will. I, I want to know um, what's going on. We have Will here. I need to know what's going on with the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, and, and and what is? <laughs> nah, don't be like that. It's okay. I it's need to know. Place. I need to know what's going on with the Kansas City Chiefs <laughs> and who stands with with Mahomes back, um, uh, with a, a bit of a healthy team. Who stands in their way when when you think about people coming out of the AFC? Like who stands in Kansas City's way? And if they had to, actually, I'm gonna ask you a very direct question. If they had to, in the AFC Championship game, I let all y'all answer. If they had to, right? And I'm going to ask Will first, but everybody else can answer. AFC Championship game, Baltimore <laughs> versus the Chiefs. Who comes out of that the winner? Be honest with me, Will. Who comes out of that? I'm definitely going to be honest with you. I think the Chiefs because we've already, all right. you know, we've already beaten them twice. Like Lamar, he has, what, 16 and three, and, and two of those three losses are to Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. And so the Chiefs can already, we've already beaten them. We kind of, um in the last game that they actually played, at Arrowhead, I believe, well, this year, this season, it really wasn't as close as the final score would make it out to be. Like, the Chiefs were actually blowing them out. And it was like two kind of miracle passes that L Lamar threw up and the receiver happened to to catch that kept them and actually kept them in the game. But um, I think both teams are better now. Like, Baltimore's a little better than they were. They have Marcus Peters. They got um uh, Jimmy's the corner. Jimmy Smith, is that his name? Yeah, the other cornerback, so they have him back. <clears throat> but also, the Chiefs' defense has gotten a lot better. Their secondary is better. Um, the run, <laughs> are, the only thing that I, I would be concerned about may be the run defense, but I think uh, Terrell Suggs, us picking him up, he plays good against the run and he sets the edge. That's one thing he can do. He may not be able to pass rush as well due to you know, him being older and he's not the – the young Terrell Suggs that he was, but he can set the edge and help out in the run game. And we've done a little better in the run. And the Chiefs are like, they have like a top 10 defense in scoring now. They're on, well, actually, um, we're only allowing 11 points in the last three games and seven day, teams have only scored 17 or less in the last four games. Yeah. So I believe the, the Chiefs are kind of like the Baltimore's kryptonite right now. You know what I'm saying? We kind of know they're they're familiar with each other and actually the the baltimore balled out in the run game when when we and we still beat them like mark ingram was eating <laughs> ingram so well, was we eating. were together yesterday when y'all got terrell thugs right when, yeah. when saints yeah. picked up janoris jenkins um who that and then while when you guys are uh, when the chiefs I, I know but when the chiefs got um terrell thugs your main concern yesterday and, and let me know if, if you've you know got an update on that yet but your main concern was Will he play for y'all? Because he said, he stated, all right, I want to go back to Baltimore. And I'm not sure I'll play for anybody else. The question is, is he going to play for y'all? Have you heard anything yet? Have you gotten any updates? Has he agreed yeah, yeah. to come and show up? 
I definitely been checking on that because you know I was looking for that. I think um I think Suggs was being strategic in that to make sure that uh sorry team didn't try to pick him up. <laughs> so if you say that, then like other teams that know they don't have a competing chance or they're not in the playoffs, uh, we're not gonna put in a waiver because we're not even gonna make it to the playoffs. So um, the four teams that put in waiver claims were actually contenders. You know, the Saints were in there. Yes, yes. Um, uh, it was us, the Saints. Titans. Tight. Was it the Titans? The I know Titans. it was top. They were all contenders. And we had and the crazy thing is we had the worst record at 12 and four. So we got them. <laughs> and so it was a good pickup, man. But he said that he will go ahead and report to the Chiefs. And so he's uh, he was scheduled to uh, get there this evening. And so I think he's going to report tomorrow because they were off today. So they have practice tomorrow. So it'll be interesting just to see how they utilize him. We've lost two of our defensive ends, and that's why we had to pick him up. Uh, we lost Okafor to a torn pectoral muscle. And then we just, well, recently, and then we lost Emmanuel Ogba to a torn pectoral muscle. So we losing guys on that D-line. And so that was a good pickup for us to get some of that experience. And he has that leadership, you know. All right, and you got the 10-4 and four right now. 12, and, yeah, ten and four. Yeah, ten and four. And you've locked up um the AFC West. Mm-hmm. So no more competition there. So yes. we will be on the lookout, man. We'll see. And um, I just hey, just quick question, Marvin. How you do you think if Chiefs Ravens a, uh, AFC Championship game, who comes out the winner? Just real quick. Honestly, man, I'm gonna go with the Chiefs because of Andy Reid, because he's gonna come up with that game plan. I don't, I put nothing past Harbaugh. Harbaugh's a good coach. Lamar Jackson, of course, is incredible, but Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, them three right there is just the chemistry, and I feel like uh, Terrell Suggs will help that defense. So it's just going to get better and better. And like I said, for you to for you guys to hold the Patriots to, like, what, 16 points that game? Mm-hmm. Defense played good, man, and they've been proven week after week after week. So honestly, Reek, I feel like the Chiefs will go to the Super Bowl. That's just my honest opinion. Shout out to the Honey Badger. Shout out to the Honey Badger. So, <laughs> I, I, I think it will be Chiefs and 49ers in the Super Bowl. That's okay. It's not going to be because of of, uh, of the play calling of that man you talked about. The only thing he knows how to do is choke in the big uh, game. I was, about to, look, I was about to bring up his championship record because it's not stellar. You um, about? He's been a lot of championship Andrew. games and have not come out on top. But anyway, Andrew. um, um, y'all remember <laughs> stays with the Philadelphia Eagles? Y'all remember that, right? Even it's, it's time with the Chiefs. Y'all know he don't come out of those games as winners a lot. He's only been to the Super Bowl one time. All right, um, talk to me, Conrad. What you got out of that? Who wins that one? Baltimore Chiefs. Um, will be more. Um, I think I think Lamar Jackson's playing at a high level. Um, and not only that. I also think that um, I also think that Harbaugh, ten times a better coach than uh, Andy Reid. Not nothing against ten Andy. Times? Just ten, to- <laughs> ten times, ten times, just to me. Um, I mean, to go, to- he went. To- hey, look, to go to the Super Bowl, you know, be the hot San Francisco team with you know little to nothing on on offense, and then you know, I mean, his defense is straight. But like, like, uh, and then like, you know. He has to play in. The, he has to. Uh, he has to compete in the AFC. You know, Andy Reid could not do anything in the AFC until he got Patrick Mahomes. But he was trying yeah, to work with like yeah, terrible terrible quarterbacks <laughs> and all that other stuff. And then when he was in the NFC, when he was in the NFC with McDonald and McNabb, which to me is a garbage quarterback, because Michael Vick made him a lot. Made them a lot better, you know what I'm saying? But McNabb was a dark garbage quarterback to me because he couldn't. Oh, we gotta go. Sustain. <laughs> McNabb was garbage. But anyway, so yeah, so yeah, be more, be more all day. Thank you. And that's oh, all he I lost got. his football card. <laughs> we got to Bro, go. McNabb what? was a garbage look, quarterback. I look, I go against the grain when it comes down to like you know, oh, who is the great? Who is the great? But do to you me, tell the truth? The greatest, to me, the greatest <laughs> NFL football player of all time. It's Jerry Rice, hands down. No okay. one. I mean, if you are, What's don't have me. Do you want to me? You know, come see me. Conversation. Big trust. Mm. That's a different conversation. What? A whole other conversation. Right. Yo, you said I'm, some outrageous I'm, stuff. I, don't, you know. I gotta edit that out. All right. Anyway, so I'm the out. editor. Wait, hold on, hold on. Everybody, everybody that watched this, I'm the editor. I edit, I don't edit nothing out. I don't edit me out. 
Y'all know gonna the, get so wait, wait, wait. Know the facts, but on the podcast, you will not hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say that. It's like, yeah, you might be the video editor, but you got the audio in. <laughs> gonna have people swerving in the traffic. <laughs> what? What's up, bro? You know the chief is said, <laughs> winning with Alex Smith. What are you talking about? Say he didn't start winning until Patrick Mahomes got there. The Chiefs had, had ain't had one losing season. Their worst season was nine and seven. It's all good. It's all good. Hey, hey check well, y'all. Well, Alex Smith has got a hell of a touchdown, bro. You got a touchdown, bro. Voice, the voice said time. All right, thank y'all so much for joining us, man. We're going to go ahead and sign out. Um, All right, but you know what? This time we'll do it a little bit different. Marv, go ahead and sign out. Tell people where they can find your stuff, bro. You can find my uh, podcast on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and I'm going to put some more distributions out on social media. So I appreciate y'all again. Give the name of your and, podcast. Uh, Mac Talk, Marvin C. Hey, Will Smith, talk to us, bro. What's the name of your podcast? Yo, yo, it's uh, Will Smith. It's red and bold, baby. Red and bold with your Kansas City football. Cheers. Mm. So, bet, yeah, bet, man. Bet. Yeah, yeah. All right, Conrad, talk to us, bro. Where can we find your stuff? All your videos? Where can we find stuff? All right, everything on uh, YouTube. Uh, find everything on Apple Podcasts, the uh, audio version. Um, be tuned. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Be tuned. Tune in to um, The Voice. He uh, has a reaction time out there. You know, I was I was happy to make that for him. Also, man, look for, look for Rick Sincere's reaction time soon. Um, and also, man, continue checking out season two with the Baby Rattlers. Uh, we don't have anything new coming up, but uh, check them out. If you're a college coach out there, please. These young men need to get in school, please. Bro, somebody won Defensive Player of the Year, right? Yeah, man, Land Landon Landon Barrett, aka Lando Bando. He has won Defensive Player of the Year from the Tallahassee Quarterback Club. He's also recognized. He's a three-star athlete now. Uh, one of the one of the top tier defensive linemen in the country. And I mean, it's just getting started, man. We we put him we put muscle on that boy. It's hey, sophomore, started. senior, what, junior? He's a junior. He's a junior, hey. and so he's going into every camp this year with a target on his back, man. He's going. He said he's going to go to every camp this year, and he's going to get. He's going to get five stars. So I say, all right, I want to, I want to, I want to hold you to that. No. All right, bet voice man. Tell people where they can find you. Where they can find your stuff. All voice. things MTV is where you can find me. Uh, not trying to rhyme, but you know it happens sometimes. Anyway, uh, <laughs> 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 but yeah, MTV Sports, uh, whether it be your social channels. Uh, you're looking for podcasts, videos, whatever. It's MTNV Sports for all your fight night news from your fights correspondent, your man, the voice. Awesome, y'all. All right, man, this is Rick Sincere, MTNV Sports. We out. God bless. They know I got that fuego, that fuego, 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 Sauce at that fuego, yeah. Stay with that sauce like Alfredo, yeah. Blessings they come when he say so. Hold up, hot to my haters, I may know, yeah. I put my homies on payroll, yeah. Placed at the top like a Kanko, uh. I throw the deuce up to silence my enemies, right through that potato. Lighting up the city, the reason I write for. Giving the gospel where the people be needing that light show. Giving the pen and we deliver more sinners with eyes closed. See the light.